As any fan of my channel knows, I have a love-hate relationship with the 270 Winchester. I absolutely love the cartridge, but I can't stand some of the people who use it. You know, 270 shooters as a group tend to be like a cult full of religious extremists who demand that you bow at the altar of the 270 and worship the gun god's own prophet, the chosen one, Jack O'Connor. These people tend to pass on fabricated stories about how O'Connor took every animal on earth with his magic wand of death, his mythical Model 70 chambered in 270 Winchester. They like to give you these fanciful ballistics, you know, making the 270 seem like God's gift to hunters. In their mind, there's never been and never will be a cartridge as good as their sacred 270. And if you disagree with them, they'll plug their ears and chant solemn prayers to the 270 God that they be delivered from the heresy of other cartridges. It's pretty obvious that 99% of these cult followers have never even read any of Jack O'Connor's writings or, you know, a very limited amount of his writings. You know, O'Connor himself couldn't even stand much of his own fan base. You know, he referred to his fans as Bubis Americanus. The truth is that O'Connor used and loved many different cartridges. You know, he used the 30 6 a great deal and said that the 30 6 is a more versatile cartridge than the 270. O'Connor absolutely loved the 7x57 Mauser and claimed that he'd seen one more uh, one-shot kills with that 7x57 Mauser than with any other cartridge he's ever seen. You know, O'Connor single-handedly brought the 416 Rigby back from the grave and he made the 375 H&H popular again too. So, you also have to understand that Jack O'Connor was against long-range hunting by today's standards, and uh, he was against taking shots over 300 yards. So most 270 followers haven't read the scripture provided by their own prophet. But if you look past the hype and take a really objective look at the 270, you'll see an absolutely fantastic cartridge. You know, the 270 Winchester has nostalgia, it's very easy to shoot, and it has a 96-year track record of reliably taking down animals all over the planet. This video will cover a brief history of the 270 and then get into a discussion of where the 270 fits in the modern world of hunting. So sit back, pour your favorite beverage, and enjoy my take on the 270 Winchester. The 270 Winchester started out life like most other cartridges, as a wildcat. It was simply a neck down 30 6 case that held a .277 diameter bullet. The 270 wasn't the first wildcat to come out of the 30 6 cartridge either. The 25 6 was already being used for 10 years prior. And the 35 Whalen was being used about the same time that the 270 was wildcatted. In 1924, Winchester decided to adopt the cartridge as the 270 WCF, which stands for 270 Winchester Centerfire. It debuted in 1925 with the Winchester Model 54 rifle. Winchester changed the neck length a little to prevent the round from being accidentally fired in a 30 6 rifle. By 1950, the WCF designation was dropped and 270 Win was printed on Model 70s and ammo manufacturers began selling ammo as 270 Winchester. The classic load for the 270 Winchester is a 130 grain bullet going about 3,100 feet per second. That load really was a game changer. It shot flatter than the 300 H&H of the day, hit harder than the classic 7x57 loads, with less recoil than a 30 6 
the 270 really was revolutionary. But it wasn't the instant hit that some think it was. Americans still favored military cartridges because in those days, most hunting rifles were sporterized military rifles or cheap lever actions. And very few Americans can just go out and buy a new Winchester Model 54, especially going through the Great Depression. Also, nobody used scopes for hunting yet, so high velocity flat shooting cartridges really didn't matter for most American hunters because there wasn't a lot of shooting done over 100 yards. Okay, so now I'm going to propose a theory that's going to piss a lot of people off. As many of you know, I'm a huge fan of firearms and hunting history. You know, I'm somewhat of a firearm history buff. And I'm also a huge fan of Jack O'Connor. But there's more rumors and pure conjecture surrounding Jack O'Connor than just about any other hunting rider, except maybe Capstick. People often say that it was Jack O'Connor that made the 270 popular. But I believe that assumption to be false. You know, before you get mad at me, hear me out. I'm about to blow your mind. Jack O'Connor bought his first 270 rifle, a Winchester Model 54, in 1925. In the early 30s, Jack was writing many articles about how great his 270 was, but nobody was buying the rifles. You know, even when O'Connor became the editor for Outdoor Life and gained a huge amount of fame, the 270 was still an unpopular cartridge. Between 1931 and 1946, Jack O'Connor spent 15 years writing about the 270, but nobody was going out and buying them. By 1946, Winchester had never sold more than 10,000 Model 70s in a year. But in 1947, Model 70 sales doubled. And by 1950s, Model 70 sales have quadrupled. So what happened in 1947 that caused Model 70 sales to all of a sudden go through the roof and for the 270s popularity to just absolutely soar? Well, two things happened in 1947. The first thing that happened was that the first high-quality affordable rifle scope came to the market, the Weaver K-Series, which was released in 1947. The K-Series of scopes would go on to be the best-selling scopes of all time. You know, uh, watch my vintage hunting scope video on my channel to get a little background on the history of hunting scopes in America. It's a really interesting video, but just be mindful that in 1947, when... Model 70 sales skyrocketed, and the 270 started to really become popular. Um, this The Weaver K series of scopes was just released that year. And the second thing that happened in 1947 was that Winchester started drilling and tapping the Model 70 for scope mounts in that year. So now your average working man could afford a scope and a rifle to put it on and that 270 was the perfect cartridge to take advantage of these new scopes so even though Jack O'Connor had been advocating and writing about the 270 for over 15 years people weren't actually buying the 270 until they could put scopes on the rifles so armed with this information did Jack O'Connor really make the 270 famous? Or did the Weaver K series of scopes actually make the 270 famous? I'll let you be the judge. But obviously, once people started shooting the 270, they fell in love with it and you know, intended to gravitate towards everything that O'Connor had to say. The 270 WCF cartridge wasn't invented for the military or for competition shooters, it was purely for the hunter. You know, those that simply wanted a flat shooting cartridge with low recoil that delivered enough energy to take down the biggest deer. Today, 
The 270 Winchester is the sixth best-selling cartridge in America. Fancy new whiz-bang cartridges constantly pop up to try to replace the 270 Winchester, but uh, they never have the low recoil for energy, ease of feeding, and ease of reloading that the classic 270 Winchester offers. Jack O'Connor pushed the 270 into many different roles during his hunting career, but you have to put things in historical context, just like anything you look at throughout history. Throughout most of O'Connor's hunting days, there was no draw tags to hunt elk, and bear hunting was completely unregulated. So if O'Connor went out hunting deer or sheep, and he happened to cross a brown bear, a moose, or a really nice elk, he'd shoot at it with his 270. O'Connor did wound and lose several elk in his career. You know, O'Connor wrote several times about needing to shoot elk and caribou three or four times with his 270 in order to bring them down. You know, Jack's first mountain goat took four, four well-placed shots right in the lungs with his 270 to bring that animal down. You know, in his book, Guns and Ammunition, you know, Jack wrote that he killed lots of moose with his 270, but he'd never, ever killed one with one shot. So put that in perspective. You know, like I said, it was a different time, and many modern hunters had the wrong impression of Jack O'Connor and the effectiveness of the 270 on large game, on larger game. You know, Jack never promoted the 270 for really large game. You know, in Jack's own words, he stated the 270 was designed as a longer range cartridge for medium sized game. For accuracy, combined with mild recoil and muzzle blast, I know of nothing that can quite equal it. You know, and also understand that uh, Jack O'Connor was a huge proponent of only taking that perfect broadside heart-lung shot on animals. You know, so he wasn't taking shoulder shots on elk like many of us prefer nowadays. But today, I don't consider the 270 Winchester to really be a great elk cartridge. I mean, it's adequate for elk, but it's definitely not ideal. You know, and I believe it's irresponsible, totally irresponsible, and probably unethical nowadays to hunt brown bears or moose with your 270. So get that fantasy of hunting Kodiak Island bears with your 270 out of your head, man. You know, O'Connor hunted extensively with his 30-06, 375 H&H, &H, um, and 416 Rigby. So he didn't live in a fantasy world where the 270 was recommended for really large game animals. You know, O'Connor was also a huge proponent of the 257 Roberts and, you know, claimed it was a superior varmint round in his books. You know, uh, O'Connor also shot varmints with his 220 Swift, and he loved that 220 Swift. So O'Connor realized that the 270 wasn't exactly a great varmint cartridge either. So what is the 270 great at? Well, in my opinion, the real role of the 270 Winchester is exactly as Jack O'Connor stated, as a fantastic deer and sheep cartridge. If you take a really objective look at the 270, you'll see that it shoots flatter and recoils a little bit less than the 30-06, but hits harder than the 25-06. As a matter of fact, I believe that the 270 Winchester is the perfect deer cartridge, you know, especially for those uh, larger mule deer in open country. I really didn't make this video intending to compare the 270 to the 30-06, but it just seems that 
no matter who does the, you know, who, no matter who talks about the 270 or no matter who debates the merits of the 270, it always goes back to that 30-06 comparison. So unfortunately, that's an inevitable outcome of this video as well. Jack O'Connor's son, Brad, wrote that his father readily admitted that the 30-06 was more versatile than the 270. And Jack mentioned the great versatility of the 30-06, both in his writings and in conversation. So I agree with O'Connor on this. To me, the only weakness of the 270 is its lack of versatility. It's more of a specialized cartridge, in my opinion. You know, the 270 Winchester with its uh, 1 in 10 twist barrel is useful throughout a range of bullet weights, spanning probably half of that of the 30 6 The 30 6 with its 1 in 10 twist standard barrel has a useful bullet range of well over 100 grains. I mean, I can personally attest to the fact that a standard 30 6 barrel will actually, you know, will accurately shoot and stabilize 110 to 220 grain bullets without issue. When I grab a rifle out of my safe to hunt here locally, I always tend to grab my 30 6 loaded with the 168 grain TTSX. You know, when I go out into my hunting spots, I always have a deer tag, a bear tag, and a pig tag, you know, and I might shoot all three of those and maybe even a coyote in a weekend. And this 168 grain TTSX traveling just under 2,900 feet per second is absolutely the most versatile load I've ever used. Let's take a look at this chart I made up right here. These are my best loads for 30 out six for 270 Winchester and for 25 out six. Be mindful that I live in California and I have to hunt with uh, approved lead free bullets. And I find that the uh, Barnes bullets are the best of those lead free bullets. So all of these loads are developed from my top velocity nodes without going over pressure. You know, they say that the minimum energy to ethically take an elk is 1,500 foot-pounds, and the minimum energy to ethically take a deer with a rifle is 1,000 foot-pounds. You know, I usually don't put too much credence into those terminal performance metrics, but those energy numbers do seem pretty fair to me. Be mindful that this video is for ethical hunters. O'Connor didn't believe in shooting animals much past 300 yards, and I don't either. So we're going to review all these loads from 350 yards and in. You know, I'm not one of those paid talking heads that regurgitates trash for ammo companies, you know, trying to sell you on high BC bullets or long range hunting. This is about ethical hunting, not selling ammo for Winchester or Hornady. And as you can see right here, these are all great hand loads for each cartridge. Pretty much any experienced hand loader will give any of these loads a thumbs up as being very close to the best that can be done safely with a real hunting bullet. These are not hand-picked numbers from somebody's favorite box of ammo that they compared to some other box of factory ammo. This is as real as a comparison gets, my friends. Most commercial 30-06 ammo is downloaded to 308 level, so most comparisons using 270 versus 30-06 commercial ammo is highly skewed. But these are not skewed numbers. All of these velocities are verified on my personal lab radar, and I'm going off of the these loads, uh, high velocity nodes. Let's look at the, uh, 25 out six first. You know, it's got plenty of energy to, uh, ethically kill a deer within these ranges, but, uh, not really enough to kill an elk much past 250 yards. 
You know, in fact, I would never elk hunt with a 25-06 period. But uh, look how flat this sucker shoots, man. Seriously. You know, and look at this recoil energy. You know, and these are true recoil energy numbers right here based off of a nine-pound rifle. This isn't Chuck Hawk's little table where all the rifles are different weights and, you know, they're, they're using some unknown powder charge to get their velocities. These are real numbers that I put in for these loads. And, uh, you know, to make it equal and even, you know, these are all long action cartridges, you know, so they should be fired in a, you know, the same weight rifle. So, um, I factored in recoil with a nine pound rifle, but, uh, the only downfall of this 25 out six, in my opinion, is in its retained energy, you know, but the recoil, you know, of this cartridge is absolutely fantastic. You know, uh, but uh, its downfall definitely is downrange energy. You know, what if you had to take a uh, not-so-perfect shot on a large animal, like a quartering shot, or you had to shoot through the shoulder on a huge mule deer? This is where the 270 starts shining. The 270 gives you a good boost in downrange energy, but keeps a relatively flat trajectory while it's doing it. You know, uh, all while keeping recoil at a pretty manageable level. But a price is paid for this additional downrange energy from the 270. The 270 gives you about 25% more kinetic energy than the 25-06, but at the expense of 45% more recoil. You know, even if I step down to a 130 grain bullet in that, you know, recoil is still going to be about 40% higher. So, you know, how the third, how the 25-06 is right at the edge of being adequate for huge mule deer, the 270 is right at the edge of being adequate for elk, moose, and bears. Now let's move up to the 30-06. You know, you're getting more energy downrange, you know, and a bigger diameter bullet making bigger holes. But you do have a little bit more recoil to deal with, and it shoots a little bit less flat, but not by much. To tell you the truth, at 300 yards in the field, you know, you'll be holding the reticle in your scope exactly the same for both of these loads. But with the 30 6 you get more energy, more mass, and more frontal diameter on the animal than you do with the 270. This makes the 30 6 better suited for animals such as elk, bears, and moose. But, you know, you also don't have to pay that high of a price in recoil or trajectory to get that performance with the 30 6. You know, 270 advocates are always stating, oh, bullet weight, energy, and diameter don't matter. It's better to have a lower recoiling, flatter shooting cartridge so you could shoot more accurately and comfortably. Well, honestly, if they really felt that way, I think they'd be shooting the 30 out, uh, the 25 out six. But uh, back to the matter at hand. Where does the 270 Winchester fit? Okay, the 30 out six is a great elk, deer, and black bear cartridge. The 25 out 6 is a great deer, coyote, and pronghorn cartridge. In my mind, that makes the 270 Winchester the perfectly balanced cartridge for deer. Just like Mr. O'Connor stated years ago. 
If I only hunted deer for the rest of my life, my 270 Winchester would be in my hands every time. Like all of the cartridges based off of the 30 6 case, the 270 is a dream to load for. You know, it loves many common powders, has great case capacity and design. It isn't sensitive to primers and components for it are extremely common. You know, I've loaded extensively for the 30 6 the 25 6 the 35 Whalen, the 338 6 the 280, and the 270 Winchester is just as easy to load as all the cartridges based off the 30 6 case. Even though I bought my first 270 rifle in 1994, I didn't start loading for it until 2003. By 2003, I was really starting to take notice of the uh, Barnes TSX bullet, and I wanted to start loading for it. You know, as luck would have it, I picked up this uh, 2003, July 2003 edition of uh, shooting times. And, uh, you know, it, it featured modern loads for the 270 Winchester. You know, and this was a fantastic article that uh, really got me into loading the uh, the 270 Winchester and the TSX bullet. This was the first cartridge I ever loaded TSXs in. You know, uh, so I ordered some 140 grain TSXs from the Midway catalog and went down a few grains off the loads in this magazine, worked my way up, and I fell in love with the 270 again. You know, this was also the first time I ever tried H4350 powder, which would eventually become my favorite powder. Today, my pet load for the 270 is a 140 grain TSX loaded with H4350 traveling at 3,055 feet per second. This load is an absolute hammer that shoots tight groups in my rifles. You know, I only load 130 and 140 grain bullets for the 270 Winchester. And both bullet weights really like 4350 powder. In my opinion, the 4350 powders and Reloader 17 are probably the best powders for the 270 Winchester using 130 and 140 grain bullets because they give maximum velocities without compressed loads because you're usually staying at or below 55 grains of powder. As you already know, reloading supplies for the 270 are super common. My grandpa used to load for the uh, 270, the 30 6 and the 3030. You know, he didn't even have a fancy press or reloading room. You know, he used these one of these uh, old uh, Lyman 310 loading tools. I don't know if you can see the writing on there. It even says 270 win on it. You know, he used that old uh, Lyman 310 loading system. And uh, I believe these are both the uh, 270 dies as well. Yeah. 270 win. Don't know if you can see that on the camera. But uh, yeah, my grandpa loaded all of his ammo with this back in the day. I mean, I have some of his uh, old brass. <laughs> You know, so it's pretty crazy that Grandpa used to actually get some pretty decent loads out of this thing. For the new viewer out there that just joined my channel to watch this video, you probably noticed that my channel isn't like other channels. You know, I don't automatically give everything a thumbs up and put out empty content just to get clicks. You know, YouTube isn't my career. 
and I have a 50 hour a week job that pays my bills, you know, and I have no sponsors that I have to make happy. You know, some of you will appreciate this, you know, whether you agree with me not or not. And uh, I thank you for being open minded. But many of you won't like this. You know, probably half the people that browse YouTube are looking for videos that affirm exactly what they want to believe. You know, it's like that friend that always asks you for advice, but doesn't really intend to listen if you don't tell them exactly what they want to hear. In this video, I laid out some historical context and actual objective data in an attempt to frame my opinion of the 270 Winchester. Ironically, my conclusion pretty much mirrors that of Jack O'Connor. You know that the 270 Winchester is the best deer and sheep cartridge, but it's not as versatile as the 30 6 To me, it's not any simpler or more complicated than that. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it at least mildly entertaining, and stay tuned for more content and the upcoming March edition of Hunt Camp Mail. As always, you can reach me with any questions or comments at Desert Dog Outdoors at gmail.com. Hit subscribe if you like my content. Thank you for watching, and as always, good hunting.